Hey, okay. I just failed. Um, I failed this interview question. I tried to do it again and I failed again. I thought I was on the right track, but I think I'm missing some fundamentals. So let's, let's talk about what's going on with my code challenges, how I'm doing interview prep and, and more. So, Hey, I'm Paul Solt from super easy apps. I'm an iPhone app developer and I'm doing a job search, trying to get a new position. I really, um, enjoy working on design and probably my favorite thing from working at GoPro was doing the hackathons, finding real problems that had millions of users that were being impacted in a negative way and then improving it. So I did that with the landscape. Um, and then I did that. Um, so that was iPad landscape that I, I improved because we really didn't support it. It was super annoying. It would just rotate back to portrait on almost every screen. And then I also improved the frame grab experience and I improved the onboarding experience with privacy permissions. So I really enjoy doing that. I've got an upcoming interview with a company um, in two weeks that I'm trying to prep for. It's like five interviews. If I pass those, then I think there's a sixth interview. Um, so I'm sort of gung-ho about that. But this was my Reddit interview and it was about making an LRU cache, which is a last recently used cache. I understand the concept. Um, I saw this once before when I applied to Zillow, I think in 2000-ish, 2001, no, sorry, 2021, um, right before the pandemic. I remember getting on a plane right before like lockdown started happening. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Anyway, um, in terms of job search, what I'm doing is Meta had a really good guide. Um, I scheduled Meta first. I was I was a little bit lukewarm about them, but they had reached out and I thought this would be a good opportunity to like stretch myself and do code challenges. And it was, they have some really good prep materials um, that I can probably share links to. And... Um, so somewhere down in the bottom, I'll have some links to some materials that you can start working on. That was really good. I didn't do as much as that as I wanted to. And I think it's a matter of time blocking and really this comes down to clearing out your distractions. So I have a few things that I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to code challenge first in the morning. Uh, that's a little bit hard with the baby. So as soon as the baby's out, I'm trying to get up here and do that. Uh, I'm trying to ignore everything else. I'm in do not disturb mode pretty much all morning long and my wife can't get a hold of me, but sort of, she's sort of adapting to how that is. Um, I think that's fine because I really need to focus on these things and coding really requires attention. And two is just going through the code challenges. And I think you have to time block. And so this is where I'm kind of stuck. I've probably spent four hours or more on this code challenge and I don't have it working. I think I I had some fundamental mistakes in the code and trying to debug and fix them has been even more costly. And so that gets into my thoughts on code challenges. Like I think code challenges as a skill is really beneficial. It's something that you should work on practicing, but at the same time, it's not going to be the same type of code that I'm writing day in and day out and trying to solve a puzzle on the fly under pressure is challenging. Now, one of the things, and I maybe I'll have a different stance in two weeks of just cranking on more code reviews. But one of my problems I have is that all the prep materials talk about trying to solve things in 15 to 20 minutes. And like, to me, that's unrealistic. If it's a hard problem, um, it takes me five to seven minutes to talk through a problem, to internalize it. Maybe I'll get faster at that. Um, I'm a very visual person. So the reason I didn't do well in the meta code challenge is I didn't have zoom set up so I could share my screen so that I could show my iPad and I could draw. And so I was stuck drawing with the mouse, which was an awful experience. And I was just like, this is not going to help me at all. I should have just gotten a pad of paper and started sketching it out because I'm a very visual person. If I can't see the relationships between objects and things, it's very hard for me um, to work effectively. So it's like, playing with something, but yeah. So my 
I think I did okay in the meta interviews. Like I could have definitely done done better if I had my iPad set up so I could screen share. I just didn't want to leave the meeting at that point um, and just wanted to run through it. So for the next interview that I had, um, so meta was first, then I had Reddit. Um, I had my iPad set up. It was way easier, but it was still getting used to the tools. And so that was the other thing I learned is that like, it's really important to be comfortable with the tools. So you have to be comfortable with their editor. You have to be comfortable um, with your iPad if you're screen sharing and how that all works. Some of them have been on Zoom. Some of them have been on Google Meet, but they both allow you to share your screen. So just make sure that you've given permission in advance with either of those platforms or whatever you know the technical screening is going to be about. Make sure that you're prepped on that. I think that's really important. The the other thing I want to talk about is like I think there's a fundamental problem. I mean, this is my my stance right now, and I might do a better video on this later. But I think there's a fundamental problem with how we're grading or how companies may be grading like people. But at the same time, there's a supply and demand. So if there's an oversupply of qualified developers, you're going to want to select the best developers. So that means it's going to be more competitive to get in. So if you want to get a job, you have to be more competitive. I think there's a mentality kind of, I don't know if it's a victim mindset, but there's this mentality that, oh, it's ridiculous that I have to do these code challenges to get in. I would rather do a, a take home or something. But the take home assessment assumes that you have infinite time to just do take home assessment after take home assessment versus if you just get good at code challenges, then you're you have a transferable skill from company to company. So that's a benefit of code challenges is it's like an upfront investment of problem solving, being able to code on the fly, being able to test, being able to talk, being able to walk through diagrams. I think that's a really good skill to have. And I think that it doesn't translate directly to writing iOS app code, but it does translate into communication of ideas. It translates into um, being comfortable, um, on the spot. There's, there's skills that you're developing when you're doing it that I think are beneficial and it's making you more comfortable with the tool. So I liken it to like Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan joins the, um, Bulls team. He doesn't stop practicing just because he made the team. He keeps practicing and he pushes himself and he pushes his team and he pushes himself and he pushes his team. And they, they have to overcome adversity of defeating other really skilled teams and players. And so that's what you have to do with code. And I see code challenges as one skill that maybe I've let languish a little bit because I haven't been interested in, previously I wasn't interested in applying to companies that required this. It was just, it's one more thing on top of everything else that I was doing. And I was just like, I wasn't ready to do it, but now I'm ready to do it. And I want to double down on code challenges. So that's kind of my focus right now. Uh, yeah. But I will say the one thing I don't like about code challenges is the ones that have like this one, the LRU cache. When I first saw this, because I had no experience, I probably did like three code challenges before I interviewed with Zillow. I didn't see a problem like this. Trying to do something like this on the fly is near impossible. Um, and recruiters and companies really expect you to cheat um, so that you're actually aware of some of these problems. And that's what I didn't get with the meta um, prep guide. They're like, if you see this problem, please let us know. But it's like, you have to see some of these types of problems, maybe not the exact same problem, but like something related in order to have a mental model of how to solve it. There's no way, they, they all talk about solving these things in 15 minutes. And I think that's a little bit ridiculous. And maybe I'll have a different stance in, in two weeks of, of doing more challenges. But I've been doing challenges for the past two weeks and it's not getting any easier. My challenges have ranged from probably 21 minutes to um, 45 minutes and maybe I'm spending, I'm wasting time. And so like, that's, that's where if you record your code challenges as you're doing them, you can sort of think, okay, 
Am I approaching this wrong? How can I optimize for speed? Like there's definite improvements that I can make after watching myself go through them and just sort of knowing how long does it take to actually like talk through the diagram? Oh, I don't want to write pseudocode on my iPad. I should be actually writing real code because I just don't have time. So it's thinking about that. The challenge is I'm a very visual person and sometimes I just need to think on paper. And maybe I'm slower than other developers at thinking. So um, that's where practice and repetition, I think, can can really help so that you're aware of what are are the tricks. And that's the other thing I don't like about code challenges that are like hard, is that some of them re require tricks or s specific knowledge of certain algorithms or how to do a certain thing in order to solve them. And they all talk about wanting to see a problem solving skill. So I don't know, I don't know how people are assessing. Um, does the communication of the idea outweigh being able to solve the problem within the specified amount of time? I don't know. If there's a surplus of candidates, it probably does. If there's not a surplus of candidates, it probably doesn't. But if you have something about your background or if you have something that differentiates you from other people, that's where I think maybe the code challenge isn't as important to be the fastest coder or to be um, the best with all these different algorithms because this is definitely a different skill. I'm not doing this in my day-to-day -day job making iPhone apps, but I think it could be beneficial and so I think what I'm going to do to sort of future proof my career is at least target one code challenge a month, maybe on the first day of the month or the first Saturday of the month. I've, I've just got to pick a day, put it on the calendar, schedule it and do it and do that as the bare minimum. If I do it on a weekly basis, like I do think there's some room for improvement on fundamentals with working with arrays, working with dictionaries, working with creating linked lists and just thinking about problems and solving problems. I think there is, there's value in that. Um, it probably plateaus at some point, but I'm not there. And in order to be more job ready, like if this next job doesn't work out, I don't want to be in the same position that I am now. And I want to be able to excel at the code challenges and, um, be prepared for that next because doing all this prep on top of a full-time job is is really hard and i barely prepped for for zillow because i just thought that my experience doing app development would be enough but they really valued the code challenges and i didn't practice that much um so it was hard to think on my feet and they're really i feel like they're really evaluating you on having a base level of knowledge and sort of cheating because you have to see these problems in order to solve them. They're not really looking for you to problem solve um, from scratch. And I think that's the mindset that I had before is like, they just want to see me solve this problem. But they really want me to be cheating a bit in that I've seen a similar problem and I can solve this problem quickly. Um, and that's the only way I think you can get pass some of these technical screenings. So I have some interviews coming up in two weeks. Um, I'll be sharing some of how that goes, though I have to sign an NDA for, I guess, those. So I probably can't talk about specifics. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at. I've applied to two companies last week. I need to apply to more companies this week. It's just uh, <laughs> doing the technical screenings was draining. Um, and all these code challenges and just the other thing that I think is so important and I'm trying to get better at this is blocking time and being in that do not disturb mode. So I'm trying to print a, a, a paper calendar the night before and just block off. Okay. When am I on baby duty in the morning before Thea goes to daycare? Um, I've been trying to walk in the morning a little bit though. My sleep, that was the other thing. My sleep was negatively impacted because I was going to bed too late. So I need to go to bed earlier because um, that was making it really hard to focus on 
and that's probably why I didn't solve this problem. I'm a little bit sleep deprived because I've been staying up far too late and waking up at like 520, 530. Um, and so the energy level has been lower. The focus has been lower. Um, problem solving has been lower. So that's really important for me. Uh, so probably like I've got to get off technology at like 930. And that means like planning my day maybe at the end of the day at 5 p.m. I print out my my schedule for tomorrow and I focus on my number one thing. Um, so that leads me to my last thing. I'll probably talk about this in, in developer productivity, but the one thing, this is by Gary Keller and um, Jay Papasan. Um, this is a guy from Keller Williams. Reality, right? Yeah. Co-founder of, of that. So like the one thing is a really good book. Highly recommend it. I, I'm probably, I'm listening to it for the third time or fourth time. I'm probably going to read the book and go through it and take notes. Um, it's been really inspiring. It's been like, oh, wow, I've been doing things wrong. How can I improve them? So that's, that's shifted my mindset on the preparation and the time aside for preparation. Um, so with that, I don't think I'm going to work on this version anymore. Um, I've got some unit tests I'll probably copy over, but I just, I failed too many times with this. So I'm just going to start over with the starter project. So I got stuck on that one. I'm using the Swift package manager. So I just have a brand new project. I probably want to copy some of those tests over and I'm just going to start over and see if I can solve it because the last time I tried to solve it didn't work out. Um, I have two ideas and I'm going to play around with it and see what happens. If you like this video, click the like button. If you want to learn more about job searching, or if you have questions on how to prepare, or if you want some of the resources that I'm using, comment down below. And I should have a link uh, about some resources that I'm using that you can find down below. So thanks so much. And I'll see you in the next video.